Hey everybody, um, welcome back to the holiday long weekend and um, Thanksgiving long weekend here in the USA. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to do this really cute little uh, crown and it's a little princess kitty crown. So I am going to be using my uh, winter crowns and my new pet stencils obviously to uh, do this beauty. So um, let's get started. I'm just going to flip my camera around and uh, you can see my work. So okay. Here is the work zone. My paint's looking all gooey. Okay, so maybe I should I turn the light up a little bit. Ah. Sorry guys, thought I had good lighting going, but maybe, maybe it's a little bit sketch. Okay, so here we go. This is the Winter Crowns and the Pets collection. And um, I'm going to be using, um, this one comes with three stencils, one, two, three. Uh, I'm going to be only using two stencils out of this winter crown one. I'm going to use the main crown and the little drops. And then out of the pet collection, it comes with three stencils, but I'm just going to be using the kitty face here. So I'm going to stick these guys up out of the way. And... Um, I'm going to stick them in the shot here somewhere so you can kind of see somehow. Mm, like that. Okay. So let's get started. In order to paint this, what I did was um, kind of showed that these were, would be where the eyebrows are. And I used some of that um, pixie paint glitter gel to, to show that. Um, and that's why it's like so shiny. But let's get started here. Let me grab a little um, card to paint on. All right. And I'll have our little final product there. Okay. I'm going to start with the little kitty head. So um, I like to use a sponge and what I do is I spray my sponge a couple of times and then I rub it on my makeup until my makeup looks like it's dry. And that's a good way to know that you've got a really nice load on your sponge. It's not going to be too wet. And when you're practicing on paper, the same level of wetness that you need to make something good on paper is the same for skin. So practicing on paper is a really great way to get used to making really nice stencil transfers. So um, to get this cat head on, I just want to try and make sure that it's in the center of this paper nicely. Okay. It's a big area. So we're going to scrape from the edges, the outside edges, going inwards like that. Tap it in there everywhere so it gets nice and filled in the middle, but scraping from the edges. And that way you're going to preserve a really good line. Now before I lift my stencil, I'm going to just grab a little bit of pink on my sponge here, pinch my sponge, and dab a little in her ear and in her ear and then a little bit like on the cheek area so she has like little rosy cheeks and that'll look really pretty. Peel that up so we got our cat started. That's pretty good. Let's get the little crown on. I'm gonna grab some yellow here. Get that ready and um, just place it over top of her head. I'm gonna put it on a little angle so it looks like it's kind of tipping and it's funny. Just because I'm painting on black paper, I'm just going to throw a little bit of white down first. And I like to press and wiggle. I've always got my stencil held down really firmly so that um, I'm not going to move my stencil. I kind of want that to be a little bit tacky because I'm going to take my sponge and I'm going to dip it directly into my glitter and then tap it on there before the paint dries and before I lift my stencil. So now I've got a perfect little sparkling crown on there. Let me make sure this light isn't too bright for you guys. Right? Okay. Keep moving because I want to show you guys that these are doable 
in party situations. Throw her little face on. Black on my sponge here. Always do a little test area. Because on these little one areas, like a little face where you got the little smile lines and little eyelashes and little eyebrows, you really want to make sure that you can get in there and press and wiggle around. If your paint's too wet, you can get underneath and get a gooey transfer. But that turned out really great. Yay! Okay, so now let's build the crown around her. Um, a little damage control on my dirty fingers here. <laughs> okay. Somebody said they just placed an order for the daubers and the pet collection. Yeah, I use stencil daubers sometimes. They're like little pieces of plastic that you can fit on your finger and there's a little sponge on the end. And um, you can use that instead of a big sponge. Um, so you can, it's, um, you're more likely to get a good transfer, especially if you're not used to using stencils. Um, Cause the sponge isn't very big. So you, there's a lot less likelihood of it messing up. So in order to get this little crown bits here, I'm going to place, I'm going to maneuver my crown around on either side of this little kitty. And I'm, because there's like nice gaps in between all the little stencil areas, I'm going to kind of try and create the same spacing between the little kitty and, um, and the, the crown bit starting. This one, I have made them going down. We could flip them up too, but it um, depends on how you paint it. If you painted this up high on the forehead, you could even tip it downwards. That would look neat. But I would, I'm going to replicate it exactly like I have it here for you guys so you can see. And then, I don't know, I'll do tons more designs because it seems to me like these are being really popular. So I should be doing a lot of videos. I kind of want to line it up somewhere where it's kind of flowy. So there's a little tip up there and there's a tip out here. So I'm going to just line it up so it looks like the crown is kind of pointing um, at her, and then there's a nice little flow. So we'll stick with just putting a little bit of white base on. Like that. And if you squeeze your sponge and make it small, it works really good. I want to do, see how I've got kind of like a little shading on my, um, I got a little shading there. I'm just going to grab my uh, really light blue like that. And before I lift my stencil, I'm just going to get in there and, and just kind of hit half of the, the shape. I'll get the little teardrops because they kind of look like gems a little bit. And if you work fast enough, you could even stick glitter on the little gemmy bits. And that would look pretty. See that? starting to look like something. So let's do the same thing on the other side. Now we know we've lined it up kind of point, pointing there. We got a kind of a spot to work from too, so we know that we're making it symmetrical. So we'll go in here and we'll put some white down first. Then we'll use our blue to capture half of the side. Like that. I think this is fairly dry. I don't know if the glitter will stick, but we'll stick it on there anyways. Yay, looking pretty pretty. Um, now for her little necklace, what I did was I just reversed this around and I used their necklace here. The pet stencil also comes with a little necklace for her, but I kind of wanted to show how you can mix and match these um, elements from these crowns and uh, just thinking outside the box of other ways that you can use your stencils. So I want it to look like a little bit of a Sorry, I want to look like a little bit of a golden necklace. All there was on that sponge was glitter. <laughs> so, I'll grab a little yellow. Look like a little bit of a golden necklace, and then it kind of matches her crown. Right? Um, and then, let's take the little drops here, and I'm going to add them in around the, the tops and the side. Now, the cool thing is that um, it actually lines up really well just the way it is. So if you just kind of, again, look through your stencil and say like, okay, this second little circle here is lining up with the tip there so that when I go over here, I can do the same thing. But um, when I was 
practicing this design to say like, hey, what am I going to paint for everybody today? I was like, man, that lines up perfectly. I don't even have to like maneuver around too much. So um, let's go like this. I'll put some white down first so that we can get really nice colors popping, right, on this black paper. Even on regular skin, if you got time to kind of double load stuff, I'm going to put, there's a little kind of a gem down there. I want to make sure my hand is in the shot still. It's crazy. There's a little gem down there. And if ever I'm painting and the comments are in the way, if you swipe to the side, it'll get rid of the comments so you can see a full screen of what I'm doing. Um, I'm kind of showing you guys the deluxe version too, so using extra colors everywhere. Let's make these little hearts pink and it'll match her little blush on her ears. And then let's make the stars yellow. It'll match the crown, kind of pull stuff together. Looks cute. So then let's do this exact same thing on the other side. And if you keep kind of going back and forth like that, then you'll be able to stay more focused. So the way I made these in order for these to be symmetrical but reversed is you have to actually like flip your stencil like that. So that's how it works like that. So don't freak out and be like, I didn't get the same. I got two of the same and be like, no, you didn't. <laughs> so what did I say? We're going to line it up. So it was the second bead down pointing there and that little heart's kind of up there. So that lines up. So I know I'm going to be symmetrical. Um, it looks like I didn't center this cat head very well because some of my little party elements here are going to fall off to the side of the paper, but that's okay. Um, I just want to show you guys the idea anyways. And see, once you have your sponges all loaded with color, it moves really fast to get all those colors. Now I have these little blank spaces there. Um, there's like some bigger teardrop things you could throw in there. Um, but I decided to use more of these because I really like the way these little guys looked and I use these little earring kind of shaped drops here and I grabbed this big heart. So that's what I did because I thought, oh, that kind of fits nicely, you know. So let's throw that in and um, we'll do it in. Maybe I'll, I don't have any purple in this design. Let's throw a little purple in. I just have to do light purple on top of this black paper. Yeah, purple looks nice. And then I'll stick actually a little bit of a, a white highlight on the corners. Yay! Yeah, I like that a lot. Okay, same thing on the other side. So you flip it, find that little earring, drop it in, try and make it a little bit symmetrical. It doesn't have to be totally symmetrical either, you guys. Like, there's, there's something to be said for just kind of fooling around with your your stuff. Okay, purple, purple, purple. Smash a little bit more white on there for a highlight. Yay. Super pretty. So you can see on this one, I took another extra step and did a little bit of outlining on it and highlighting. Um, this is just stencil. So no paintbrush needed, guys. And you can get a, um, a design that looks just like this. So and it's really fancy. It didn't take very long, even with all my talking and everything. Um, but let me show you what I would do if I was to outline. So I always kind of encourage people as well to, um, you know, take the time to, to if, you, if you're not in a rush and you're trying to keep kids in the chair, um, take time to outline stuff and, and add some extra highlights and shadows because... You keep them in the chair and then people kind of go, oh, what's going on over there? Especially if you're doing like paper face kind of stuff. And then people are like, what's going on over there? And then you got a kid in the chair and something really pretty going on. And you're adding all these finishing touches to it. So we'll put a little shine in her eye because that'll make her come alive, right? And then um, I'll just put kind of like a solid stroke of highlight there. I'll put a little solid stroke of highlight in her eye there. And then um, I'll go around the top edges of my gems here of this crown. And just the top edges a little. Okay. And 
then we'll put and when you put a little paintbrush action on top of your stencils like this one you're learning some kind of fine motor muscle memory techniques and skills and uh, two you've got something it's like a coloring book at this point you know like you're just kind of outlining and tracing and stuff like that so and again that's creating some muscle memory so you'll actually become a better painter and then if you don't have your stencils one day but you've transferred this cat face so many times and you've seen it so many times you can literally be like oh I know a cat I'll just bust it out and you know exactly what size where to place it because you've seen it you've done it a million times using the stencil so I like to sell these stencils as training tools too you know like it's not just oh now you gotta use a stencil forever and maybe you do use a stencil forever because you're already an awesome balloon artist and once in a while you just offer um you know face painting kinda like I have no clue how to do a balloon <laughs> so <laughs> I totally get it and understand um, okay, so let's do a little outline on these um, gems. I don't want to do it too dark, like I don't want to do a heavy black on there. So I'm going to use a dark teal. And cut it down the center like that. Get more water. Painting with a paintbrush on paper is kind of weird. Sponging on with the stencil is really great, but definitely have to be a little bit wetter to kind of get that movement with your brush that you're used to, you know? And then something I like to do is in this little curve, that's that little bit of white, we did an extra white highlight on the top, just kind of hit it in there like that, and then it gives it this weird dimension of like, wait, what's going on? It's extra busy and what? You're like, yeah, it is extra busy in what? You can go underneath all of these little beads, give it a little half circle outline touch. That just gives it loads of dimension and makes it fun and exciting. Um, grab some black here. And uh, cut in her ears like that that. Black outline's not really going to show on the outside edge of this. But I like to kind of cut in the fur a little bit too. And just for fun. Totally you don't have to do this. It's just more, uh, you know, something to do. You got black on your paintbrush. Um, oh, I never did anything underneath the little beads here. Um, the beads on her necklace. So what I would do is do a little round load. Put a little shine on them. Doink, 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 doink. And the big one can have a little bit extra. And then just to stick with the whole like the theme of these crystals that are kind of going around the edge of the crown, I would just get some same teal and go underneath. Because I want her face to be the really the only thing outlined in black because then her face will really pop and this other stuff just bring, will look like magic you know what I mean um, and that's what you want to kind of do is create this little super fantasy magic lots of little elements it's hard to paint a whole bunch of these little kind of elements like all these little hearts and perfect little stars and stuff like that it's hard to paint hand paint those so having a stencil that does that um, is not is really nice and I try and make my stencils so that like guys look it's like two totally different kinds of things going on here and we just use pieces of them and they all mix and match together you don't really get that with so many stencils like they'll be like a mash of just stars or a mash of just like scales or a mash of just like solid dots or something like that like these stencils can be super valuable and I spend a lot of time um, trying to figure out how to make them so that it's not just within one kit that you mix and match, but it is in my, my kits across the board, you know, that you can mix and match. So if you own a few of them, you can use them all together. Um, I'm just roll. I'm doing like a little round load here. So I'm rolling my paintbrush and my paint to make it a nice circle. And um, I'm going to connect the necklace with some little dots. So that's just a little extra. Same thing between these beads. 
I'm doing white on this black paper. I'd probably use black dots if, it, if I was painting on skin. Um, those little types of things make a big difference. Um, and then you can do them like everywhere. You can throw them in connecting here like it's a whole bunch of beads. Same thing here. Make it look like they're all connected, right? Connect the little heart here to the star. It looks like jewelry, right? It looks like that little star is connected to that heart, and this one's connected to there. And then you can make this one connected to this heart, right? As long as you kind of like make it go down a little and up so they're kind of curving around. It's pretty. So there's an extra little space here, and because I am like to have things pretty balanced and symmetrical, um, I was just thinking I'd probably take these little stars here and I can transfer those so it kind of goes bling bling. So, um, and then white would probably do the trick. Um, I'll show you with my little finger dauber because it's a tiny little area. So sometimes using a finger dauber when you're just trying to pick up one little element is super useful. Um, which way do I want them going? Up away from her or towards her? I'm going to go towards her so that it kind of keeps that peak. But you guys see what I mean, right? I got them both kind of going like that. So we'll just fill it in right like that. And I bet you also I have some um, rub in there. Hold that stencil down firm and press and rub that in. So that way you're moving the paint all the way to the tips so that you get a really sharp, pretty uh, transfer like that. That looks really pretty. I'm really happy about that. That looks really pretty. Um, yeah, yeah. We're all done already. Isn't that cute? So let's hold this up to the camera so you can really see. Wouldn't you want that on your forehead? If you put that on the kid's forehead at a party, they would flip. Um, then if you're wondering, oh, that's great. It's on a piece of paper, Leia. Um, but does it actually fit on a kid's forehead? I will say actually, yes, it does. Um, this is practice, yeah, the practice board. You guys all have one of these, right? Um, so you can see it actually is going to fit on there. I painted one earlier on a piece of plastic here. Whoops, don't lose my bottle. But you can see it fits. That's the same. It's, I mean, obviously it's the same because I use the stencil, but it fits on one of these practice boards. Um, you could also paint like little paws right here. And then when their eyebrows move, the paw the paws will move up and down. Um, I don't know if I can tuck this under if it'll show up on the camera. Yeah. So that's the size. And then again, you can put as little or as few elements depending on the size of the face. You know, you got a really kid, a small face, or if you've got a really big face um, for the kids, then um, yeah, you can kind of mix and match what size you're dealing with um, to, to make it fit an adult, to make it fit, fit a kid. But I'm excited. I'm loving, loving it. I'm extending my sale. So I've got Black Friday all weekend. I went in and changed the code on my website. So um, if you order $70 of stencil or any kind of product on the website or more, I'm giving free shipping worldwide. So that is uh, fun. And um, also, I always give away a free little gift. So with the winter crowns, I'm giving away a little snowflake stencil. And with the pets collection, I am giving away a paws, some little love paws, which um, can be really cute and handy. Um, so those are two of, of the three new kits and just mix and matching them together. I'm having a lot of fun with it. I hope you guys like this. And I hope to see this. I hope to be able to paint this on a kid. I got a job coming up in a couple of weeks. So I'm hoping I'll be able to convince them of this. I'm just going to take these cards with me, actually, and um, see if I can't just show the kids and be like, hey, do you want this? And my guess is that they're going to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> that I can uh, put some on some humans to show you guys. But leave some comments, ask me any questions, and I'll turn this camera around to say goodbye to you guys.
my guys. Oh, wow, it's like so overexposed. There we go. Take care. Thanks so much. Ah! <laughs> Drop the camera. Thanks so much. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.